Put your hand on your Bible, say, this is God's holy word, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And tonight, Holy Spirit, breathe life into every word spoken, every letter read. Let it be spirit and life. Let my life be changed and transformed in the presence of the Most High God. Tonight in Jesus' name. So I touched a little on this, the end of January in our anointing meeting, and I just feel I've got to do it tonight again. So tonight, prepare your heart. Uh, we have discussed it over and over again, and we've said it this week, that Isaiah 66 and verse 1 says, The heavens, O God, are thy throne. Heaven is the throne. That's the place of authority. And earth is the footstool. That's the place where authority is supposed to be exerted. Okay? Earth is a place for God's feet. So uh, we know that when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he took him on a high pinnacle and said, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all these kingdoms and their glories. Remember? For it has been given to me. So he says, this, this authority of the kingdoms has been given me. I can give it to you if you will just fall down and worship me. So Jesus later on taught the disciples, whenever you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the kingdom of heaven now come to earth. So God wants that a combination because in the beginning, God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And I said it here the first day, only on the fourth day came planets. So before there were a sun and a moon and a star, there was heaven and earth. So uh, I don't know what the scientists say. I don't really care a lot. I rather believe the Bible. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The authority on earth was given away. Jesus came and Satan said, I can give it to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said, no, you're going to worship the Lord your God only in him, only shall you serve. But three and a half years later, coming out of the tomb, Jesus appeared unto the disciples in Matthew 28 verse 19. And he says, all authority, all authority in heaven and on earth has now been given to me. It's now mine. So there's no authority left to any other alien spirit. It's all been given back to me. I got it rightfully back. I didn't get it behind a closed door. I didn't get it in the wrong way. All authority is now been given to me. So now I give it to you. Go. So Jesus says something in this fashion in Matthew 18 verse 18. He says, again I say unto you, if two of you shall agree... On touching anything that they may ask on earth, it shall be done to them by my Father which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, if we stand on earth and we can agree, then heaven will come to answer us. So everything that is in heaven, that is God, God's authority, God's power, God's glory, on earth We need to agree to see heaven and earth move because all authority is now mine. God created heaven and earth in the beginning. Man was supposed to rule. So the heaven is still the throne. Earth is still the footstool. You can have everything on earth earth which is in heaven. So our Father which art in heaven, your kingdom come, heavenly one. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do we want it or don't we want it? But when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that'll be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. But while on earth, oh brother, I tell you it's hell on earth. But Jesus said, let heaven come on earth. But we want hell on earth. Where did the scripture say, let your will be done on earth as it is in hell? (laughs) Our Father which art in heaven, let hell come to earth. So I tell you, we've been going through hell and high waters. Well, hell and high water can't go together because the one is on fly fire and the other one is (laughs) flowing with water. (laughs) So, forget it. 
Let's just read. Maybe I should just quote one more scripture. But I don't know what I did in January. End of January to me it was an awesome service. So I'm trying to think what I did. I want to get some of that stuff back here tonight. I want heavenly authority, power, glory right now where I'm standing here tonight. So when the disciples were challenged by the Pharisees about a lame man that got healed at the gate called Beautiful. This is their prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven. <laughs> I just said my way. Huh? They said, why do the heathen rage and the nations imagine a vain thing? Pontius Pilate has stood up against Christ, the anointed one of God. Yeah. And they prayed Psalm 2 back to God. And then they said, Lord, these people are threatening that we are not supposed to preach in the name of Jesus. They said, oh God, listen to their threatenings. And grant these servants of yours to speak thy word, not our word, to speak thou, thy word with boldness so that your hand... God, help us to speak your word. So if we speak your word, remember Jeremiah, I will put my words in your mouth and then you will speak. Same in Isaiah. So that when we speak your word, this will be the result. Your hand will come and bring healing. Signs, wonders, miracles. Now I want to ask you, when the disciples prayed this prayer, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 29 through 33, and when they prayed together, the place was shaken where they were together, and they spoke the word of God with boldness, and with great power did the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Where was God in heaven? Who was speaking? The disciples. Whose word were they speaking? The heavenly Father's word. What happened? God stretched out His hand. Where did they see God's hand? With their hands. What happened? Great power, signs, miracles, healings. Who saw a hand from heaven coming down and take the cripple there at the gate called Beautiful and raise him up? No, it was Peter and John that said, look on us. And they took him by the hand and they raised him up and his ankle bones received strength and he jumped and shouted and leaped and praised God. But the prayer is, oh God, stretch out your hand when we speak your word. So that we will see healings, signs, wonders and miracles in the name of your holy child Jesus. Who has ever seen God's hand coming out of heaven? Smoke and fire pricking up the sick. Or who has seen people walking up to sick people, touching them and say, rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's read the scripture. Verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel. My called ones. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Come on, what did John see? What did John hear when he was on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus appeared unto him? Hair white as wool, eyes like a flaming fire, feet like bronze burning in the fire. What did John hear? Jesus said, I am he. I am the first, I am the last. I am the beginning, I am the ending. I am the alpha, I am the omega. I am the root of David. I am the one, you know. So this is it. Listen what he says. Yes, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth. And my right hand has spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together to execute my decrees. You see, the problem is why people don't see the awesome the results that we're supposed to see. We separate heaven and earth and we make earth a planet and we make heaven a home. And the only way you can get to heaven is one day when you say, Phew. and the only way you can reach heaven is by death. Now, if death is such a great enemy, why do we have to kill him to get to our final destiny? 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I told you the first day. When God drove Adam out of the garden, God didn't, God didn't take paradise away. He took man away. So paradise was still at the same place. Where? In the garden. On earth. So Paul says, I was caught up into the third heaven. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2. Verse 4, and I know a man, I was caught up in paradise. So he says, third heaven equals paradise, equals the garden, equals the place where the tree of life is. So it's not in a distant, it's another realm. So I got to be spiritual to find out that God wants heaven and earth, the same place. So Father, let the stuff of heaven manifest on earth. Why do we have to go there to get it? Why can't we have faith and getting the unseen into the seen? So God says, it's my hand that spread it out. And when I speak to heaven and earth, there's a decreement and they all work together at the same time. So let's go to Acts chapter 8. Verse 5 says, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. And great crowds of people with one accord, say they were in agreement, Amen. listened and heeded what was said by Philip as they heard him and watched the miracles and the wonders yes. which he kept performing from time to time. Amen. Everybody says, wonders and miracles. That's what we're here for tonight, Amen. for wonders and miracles. He yes. says, the foul spirits, that's the ugly, stinking, stupid demons, came out of many who were possessed by them, screaming and shouting with a loud voice. And many who were suffering from palsy or were crippled were restored to health. Everybody say, healings, signs and wonders. <laughs> and there was great rejoicing in that city, but there was a man named Simon who had formerly practiced magic arts in the city to the utter amazement of the Samaritan nation, claiming that he himself was an extraordinary and distinguished person. They all paid earnest attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is that exhibition of the power of God, which is called great. And they were attentive and made much of him because for a long time he had amazed and bewildered and dazzled them with his skill in magic arts. But when they believed the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As Philip preached, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. What made the magician believe? I'll ask it one more time. What made Simon the magician to believe in Almighty God to even be saved and baptized? Signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that the country of Samaria had accepted and welcomed the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them. And they came down and prayed for them that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. What did they come down for from Jerusalem to Samaria? For one purpose. These people now have met Jesus because of Philip the deacon preaching and because even the Sangomas are now coming to Jesus. Even the magicians are throwing away their arts. They see the miracles and say, oh, we want it. But we haven't got the knowledge to teach you how it works, so we need to get the apostles. So here comes Peter and John and James, and they say, well, if they now got the power and they see how it works, then they need to know where it comes from. And they prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon any of them, but they had only been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then the apostles, Holy Ghost, help, laid their hands on them, one by one. And they received the Holy Spirit. What did they do? They laid their hands upon them one by one. And what happened? They received the Holy Spirit. Now let's go on. Well, I'm going to challenge you to minister as from this Sunday in your church. Amen. However, when Simon... Remember a former Sangoma, 
Wie the magician, he can't do anything anymore. He's met Jesus, so the devil is out of him. So he can't trick the people. He can't blow fire. He can't throw stuff. He can't get rabbits out. He can't pull ribbons out. He has now nothing. Here comes the disciples. And they lay hands on the people. The guy watching them is a former magician. With that in mind, let's read. Verse 18. However, when Simon saw, the former magician, that the Holy Spirit was imparted through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he brought money and offered it to them and said, give me that trick. Oh, please, don't be so religious. Grant me also this power and authority in order that anyone on whom I place my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter said to him, you wicked thing, it can't be bought by money. May the eternal God help us tonight. The church have lost the art of laying on of hands with the following results that the other people standing by will see something happening to such an extent that they will even offer you money to be able to get the same power that with a laying on of hands there will be an exhibition of the power from on high so God says with my hands I have laid the foundations of the earth with my hands I have formed the heavens and when I make a decree heaven and earth will come together and stand in attention so if two of you agree on this earth my father in heaven will see that there will be that combination of heaven and earth. So our Father, which art in heaven, let that kingdom and will be done on this earth and come on earth. So, O oh God, will you not give us boldness to speak your word? So that when we speak your word, your hand will follow our words. And when we lay our hands, we will see healings, signs, wonders, miracles. And when they prayed, the shaking was there and they went forth preaching and with great power. The apostles gave witness. Can't believe this is awesome stuff. Three times in a row, the apostles came down, laid hands. The former magician said, Yes. Chicai Ferrari. And he said, uh, how do you do that? What is it? Give me. He didn't say, give me power. He didn't say, he said, give me that I may lay my hands. And when I lay my hands, I want to see what I saw when you laid your hands. Come on, church. What has happened to the laying on of hands in the church of Jesus Christ? What has happened to the authority and the power of the laying on of your hands? On how many people have you laid hands the last month and saw the results of the hand of God upon your hand? When you speak His word, He will follow it with results. When last have you laid hands with results? How much does it cost? Peter said, may your money just go with you. To think that you could buy the free gift (laughs) 
the free gift of God with money. You stupid idiot, it costs you nothing. You just need to understand that heaven and earth is a combined unit and the heavenly power needs to be exerted on earth. You need to get the spiritual stuff in a fleshly body and manifest it spiritually and people will see it physically. When Jesus taught, he always confirmed it with miracles. When Jesus did miracles, he always confirmed it with teachings. Come on, church, just wake up. Why are we at this conference? We want to have the power to go forth and bring the glory of God back to this earth. Mark chapter 5, verse 22. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, that is Jesus, he prostrated himself at his feet, begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him. In Matthew, it says his daughter already died. So here comes the ruler. He's not just some ordinary guy. He's like the Archbishop Pope type of thing, you know. <laughs> he comes to you, my little daughter is at the point of death. Matthew says she already died. But Jesus, I don't care what, just bring that hand to my house. And if that hand can be laid on my daughter, she shall live. Now we know on the road another scene took place. A little lady that had the issue of blood 12 years ago. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I should be middle and she stopped the procession and Jesus turned around who touched me. Peter said, you see the crowds throng you. How do you say? And Jesus, now I felt power going out of me. And you know, and in the meantime, verse 35. While he was still speaking, they came from the ruler's house and said to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Why do you bother and distress the teacher any further? Overhearing, but ignoring. I wish somebody would preach on that one day. Overhearing, but ignoring. That's more or less what you should do to that bad news. Overhearing, but ignoring what they say, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue. Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. Keep on believing in what? What you said previously, you said, bring your hand to my house. And if you lay your hand on my daughter, she shall live. Jesus said, stick with your faith confession. When they arrived at the house, that is exactly what Jesus did. Touched the little daughter and she was made whole. Luke chapter 4. Now at the setting of the sun, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases, brought them to him. And he laid his hands upon every one of them and cured them. And demons even came out of many people, screaming out and crying out, more or less the same as Philip and Stephen in Acts chapter 8. Dear pastor friend, on how many people have you laid hands lately with results of demons screaming coming out, sicknesses disappearing, signs, wonders, and miracles leaving, and people receiving the Holy Spirit with a sign that they know that they've received so that other people could see they received the Holy Spirit. Come on, how open is it doing it like stand up? Jesus sagt er mal, da kann ich nicht lecker leben. My hand, his head. I just hold him a little bit. Now he will not quickly come by. But he can move. <laughs> Yeah. 
So, uh, when he was teaching, verse 10, in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, thou art loose. Not, I'm going to lose you. Now, remember what we said in Matthew 18. If any two of you shall agree on touching anything that they may ask on earth, it shall be done to them by my Father, which are... Uh, again I say unto you, whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. <laughs> I lose you now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've never seen me laugh in all my life. <laughs> Woman, you are loose. <laughs> the dead shall not praise the Lord. <laughs> Oui, geo goed vorm. My hands, his head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, he's supposed to be the interpreter. How on earth is he going to interpret? <laughs> there goes the interpreter for the Koreans. <laughs> ha. <laughs> All the way from England, the Frenchman, bless him. Woo! <laughs> I don't know why you get red in your neck, but take another dose. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> this is our Portuguese pastor who makes the oils. Ha 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 ha! Ha! Moi! 
बापजी help us they're gonna be in a break <laughs> and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight <laughs> yeah i thought that was good <laughs> we can just as well stop how do we go on <laughs> I haven't even finished the introduction. <laughs> When lost, have you laid hands on your people yeah. with results? When the mid Come on the center block stand. With your hands in the air. Come on, you're in the Why you want it? Take it. <laughs> When lost. Have you laid hands on people with results? With re results. Oh. <laughs> from Korea That's a nice stretch <laughs> Keep it there keep it there keep it there Keep it there That's a good workout Man in the corner zap him lord right there <laughs> Brother It's an awesome stretch, man. Uh, preachers make you got to have everything under control. Why don't you just lose control for a change? <laughs> Why do you want to work it all out? Why don't you just give God a chance to step into your church? They flew out for the meetings from Korea. Bless them Lord, double double it up. Double it up. Jib 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 jabba dabba dab. Yeah, make a backflip. She can't understand English. Flip it back, sister. Saw with the laying on of hands. Yo, yeah, where is that woman already? Lord help.
what? So uh, when the magician saw <laughs> with the laying on of hands, Whoa, this thing is a bit full of oil tonight. Mm. Oh, smells awesome. Whoa. Whoa. The whole room's gonna smell of this oil. Fourteen different ingredients of biblical oil. I went to the Holy Well in St. Albans in England, where the first martyr died, 200 AD. And according to history, it's in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, those who ever read the book. This guy was a Roman soldier. And when the Romans came in and besieged England, and they wanted to kill this priest, this Roman soldier said to the priest, give me your robes and they'll kill me instead of you. Because he loved Jesus. And as the Romans beheaded him, his head fell where uh, this well was, and this well wasn't really running. And when they beheaded him, this well started springing up, and for two or hundred years or something, whenever people came to that well, miracles just happened. You don't have to believe it. I do. So I went to that well, and I picked some of those leaves out there and put it in olive oil. That's growing inside the well. Just the leaves with olive oil, and you take pure spikenard, no difference. It smells exactly the same. I said, Lord, what on earth is this? So I've got some of those leaves in here. So if you see something drifting in, it's pieces of the leaves. So tonight, we've got a table on that side. We've got a table on this side. And I've got oil in the center. So Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, Redeemer, friend, and King. The night which he was betrayed, he took bread, and he said, this is my body. Now take it, take it, and get the results that we see in this house. He didn't say it's a resemblance. He didn't say it's a symbol. He didn't say it's a type or a shadow. He said, this is my body. Eat it. And when you do, you proclaim my death until I come. And after the sup, he took the cup and said, This is the New Testament in my blood. Drink it and proclaim my death. Like so Paul says, If you do not discern this is the Lord's body, they will be sick among you. People will die before their time. He didn't say if you discern this body. If you want to discern that body, go to Ephesians 2. If you want to discern this body, go to 1 Corinthians 11. Jesus, thank you for your body that was broken for me. I eat your flesh. No, because that's Roman Catholic. No, it's bread. <laughs> and if you discern it, you will not be sick. This is the New Testament in my blood. Thank you for the New Testament in your blood. Better promises. Better blessings. Thank you. As you go to the table, you take a piece of bread, say, thank you, Jesus, for your body is broken for me. You take a cup. You talk to God whatever you want to. So then when you're finished, you just come to the front. The ushers will see that there's not a stampede. And I will be in the front anointing you with oil. And uh, if you really can't make it, they'll just carry you away. Eternal Father, 
In the name of your holy child, Jesus, we pray, give us boldness. Mm. To speak your word. So that your hand will be stretched out with healings, signs, wonders, miracles. Tonight I pray that there will be such impartation greater than what we could think X8 ne ever had so that when we lay hands on people, they will receive miracle power of the Holy Ghost and we will see it, feel it, know it, go away with it, keep it in Jesus' mighty name.
Please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.